The Denver Broncos and Las Vegas Raiders are set for a Sunday afternoon showdown at Empower Field. Coming up on Broncos Weekend, we'll discuss how this Week 11 matchup differs from their first meeting and how the Broncos can get a different result as they seek a revenge win over their longtime AFC West rival. Broncos Weekend starts right now. I mean, this has been uh, one of the best rivalries in football forever, I think, 60 years. I mean, I know how much it means to the fans, the players in that room, and I mean, it's Raiders week. It's great for our game to have these kind of rivalries. It's great to see that. It's going to be a great game. Thanks for joining us for the Week 11 edition of Broncos Weekend, everyone. I'm Alexis Perry. To my left, the Hall of Famer Steve Atwater. And of course, former Broncos offensive lineman, Big O, Orlando Franklin. Any other nicknames that we should know about? I like Slim. Slim? Since, you know, I lost over 100 pounds. That always works for me. Oh, Slim O too? Yeah. I like Big O that. and Slim O. Yeah. Either one. I, I, I promise you, I'll turn to either one of them. I go. love hearing <laughs> what the fans have been saying. They're like, who's the guy on the right? Like, <laughs> looks like a totally different guy. So, congratulations, Big Thank O. You. I appreciate it. All right, gentlemen, it is Raiders week for the final time this season. These two teams sit at the bottom of the AFC West. The Broncos with a 3-6 and six record, while the Raiders are 2-7 and seven with one division win this season, which came week four over the Broncos. The 23 points scored in that game marked a season high for the Broncos as Russell Wilson had his most efficient game of the season, throwing for 237 yards and two touchdowns while running one in himself. Guys, while it wasn't enough to get the win, we at least saw some points up on the board. So what worked well for the Broncos offensively the last time they faced the Raiders that they might be able to tap into this week? Well, I would say the run game wasn't there. Uh, we only had 85 yards rushing. 29 of which came from Russell, Russell Wilson, yep. but the passing game was on point. I think Russell Wilson played his most efficient game as a Broncos quarterback. He had a quarterback rating of 124.9, which is his highest QB rating so far this year. Now, hopefully he can match that or do even better, and hopefully we can come out with the dub. Taking advantage of the Raiders, letting the Raiders be Raiders. Um, in that game, what I noticed was Russell Wilson was able to catch the Raiders off guard a lot of times where they were out of position. Or, hey, you know what? I have a nickelback that goes to the wrong side of the field and doesn't realize he actually should be on the left side of the field. Yes. So Russ did a great job of understanding what the defense was in. And, oh, my goodness, they don't have a person over here for support and get into the line of scrimmage as fast as possible and snapping the ball and taking advantage of some of the weaknesses that the Raiders possessed in week four when they played the first time around. Well, Raiders running back Josh Jacobs, he mentioned that they can't really look at the tape from week four when preparing for this game, given the fact that this Denver defense is so different than it was week four, obviously. We also learned this week that Kaywon Williams, the cornerback for the Broncos, he will miss this week as well. So in addition to his absence, what are some of the glaring differences that you've seen from this Denver defense over the past few weeks? Well, we saw it last week it, coming out of a bye week, right? And now the Raiders have to play it. So I understand what Josh Jacobs was, is saying, because last week we saw this Broncos defense now go into a completely different base formation where we had Draymond Jones and Jonathan Cooper as the outside linebackers, but you found a way to get Mike Purcell's um, Deshaun Williams and DJ Jones as your defensive line. So that was a nice little wrinkle. And typically what we've also seen here as well as Josie Jewell and Alex Singleton have not been on the field at the same time. Mm -hmm. But if you cut the film on from last week, they're on the field at the same time. So this is a very good time to play a division opponent like the Raiders because Josh Jacobs is telling the truth. You can't look at the film. It's drastically changed since they played many weeks ago. Yeah, I agree with that. And then some of the other guys aren't there. Bradley Chubb is no longer yeah. here. Randy Gregory, who played that first game, he's not here. And like you mentioned, Kwan Williams not here. But guess what? Regardless of who's on the field, these guys are still being super productive on the defensive side of the ball. They're, they're, they're stopping, shut, shutting receivers down, uh, making big plays in the run game. And last week's game, I hope, is just a precursor of what's going to happen this week. Yes, well, this week marks the first time Coach Hackett and this Broncos staff will see the same team for the second time. But like the Broncos, this Raiders team looks quite a bit different now, too. I mean, you definitely watch it. You want to see how they attacked us, the different ways. Uh, we also you know, look back at the old stuff that we've done, if there's anything we can carry over, because you want it to be as much of a review for the guys, especially now that we're later into the season. Um, so we kind of review all that stuff, look at the things that they did, uh, look at the things they might repeat, some of the things they might change up. And uh, so we definitely look at that quite a bit. But it's still, you know, you got to look back at the four games and see what they're doing now. They've had a lot of personnel changes themselves. 
The Las Vegas Raiders are coming off their third straight loss after falling 25 to 20 to Jeff Saturday's Colts on Sunday. We've all seen snippets of Derek Carr's emotional postgame press conference throughout the week. So after seeing that and really watching their season unfold, what do you guys think is the current state of the silver and black right now? Well, what did you expect them to do? I mean, they, this is a team that's blown three 17 point leads, right? The Raiders are falling right now. It is a dumpster fire out there when watching this football team. And I'm questioning, do guys want to play for Josh McDaniels or do they want to get out of there and say one, two, three Cancun? So seeing Josh, seeing Derek Carr this past week and how emotional he was, you know, what else were you led to do? Jeff Saturday comes in from, from the analyst booth and he's able to basically curb stomp your football team. So Derek Carr went up there and showed that raw emotion, and he's questioning a lot of guys in that locker room if they yeah. want to be Raiders anymore. Yeah, uh, now I'm not sure from the outside looking in. I've heard the, a lot of people saying exactly what you're saying, that a lot of guys may not want to be there. But guess what? They've had a ton of injuries, just like we have uh, a couple of their key players, Hunter Renfro and Darren Waller. So that's kind of hamstrung their offense a little bit. Uh, but I would imagine they feel good about – uh, the owner, Mark Davis, coming out and showing his support for the coach. Uh, but, yeah, I'm, I'm just not sure exactly what's going on. Uh, it's something funny going on. It doesn't, doesn't smell right, though. <laughs> well, still to come here on Broncos Weekend, Steve and Orlando will take a look at a couple of key plays that we could see as the Broncos and Raiders meet again this week. From a defensive standpoint, you know, it starts with stopping the run. You know, Josh Jacobs, I feel like his – been one of the more uh, underrated players, um, you know, this year, and uh, I think he's doing an amazing job, you know, for them and kind of getting that offense going. And they they did a good job, you know, moving the ball against us, you know, earlier in the season. And so, um, for us, in order to win this game, you know, it's going to start defensively. You know, we got to generate takeaways for the offense, um, set them up on short field, um, find ways to keep momentum, and uh, find ways to take away momentum. You know, like if if something happens and we're on the field a little bit earlier than expected, like we got to be able to go out there and, you know, get a takeaway back, do whatever we need to do. But that's how it's, that's how we're going to win the game. We got to stop the run. We got to eliminate explosives in the back end. You're watching Broncos Weekend, everyone. I'm Alexis Perry alongside Steve Atwater and Big O. Guys, Justin Simmons said it. It starts with stopping the run this week just as it did last week against Derrick Henry. The Broncos held Henry to just 53 yards on 19 carries. So as we take a look at this play early in the fourth quarter on Sunday, Steve worked so well on this play. And what did Denver's D do last week in Tennessee that could apply this week against Josh Jacobs? First off, they were aware of the offensive personnel that the Tennessee Titans came out in. Two backs, two tight ends, one right receiver. That's a heavy run formation. That's a give. You know they're going to run it. You know they're going to give to Derrick Henry. And guess what? I think they listened to you, Big O, from last week. Yep. They lined up with uh, five guys up front. We had four big guys. One of our interior defensive linemen, Draymond Jones, they put him at defensive end, and he held it down over there. And on the other end, they had Jonathan Cooper. And we had three inside linebackers. And, uh, man, they were able to stuff that run. Uh, and also what I liked was – the de defensive linemen, linebackers, when they filled the hole, they made it to where it was like a, a, a one line, just a straight line. They didn't have it to where guys were up the field, guys yeah. were getting uh, pushed off the line of scrimmage. A wall. It was a great line right there. And, and when teams can do that, they can hold, uh, they can stop offenses from running the ball effectively against them. And they did a great job of doing that on this play. Yeah, just to pick you back off of what Steve said, you know, going out there and saying we're going to go on big base, right? Typically, the Broncos are a 3-4 defense, three defensive linemen, four linebackers. Against Derrick Henry, what they did was they went to big base. They removed a corner out there, and now they had Alex Singleton, Josie Jewell, and Jonas Griffin at the linebacker spots. That is, hey, we're going to stop the run all the way. We are daring you to throw the ball. We're daring you to put the ball up in the air, but we're not going to allow Derrick Henry to stop us. So I love the fact that they, they approached the game like that but this week we got to do that with Josh Jacobs as well because it was a get-right game in week four for Josh Jacobs. The Raiders were down on him, and he was able to rush for over 150 yards. So I'm looking for Isa Everett to continue to get creative. And, oh, by the way, you're down with Bradley Chubb leaving. Draymond Jones has showed you that he can naturally set the edge and be that end man in the line of scrimmage. So hopefully we see more of that to come for the rest of the season. Well, as for the Broncos offense, K.J. Hamler, he is out this week. Jerry Judy, he's day-to-day, -day, so his status for this game is still up in the air. So it looks like the Broncos will have to rely 
on some of their younger weapons like they did on this play the last time they faced off against the Raiders. Steve, what did you see on this Wilson to Kendall Hinton connection late in the first half? Well, first off, uh, all these big plays, they start off with the offensive line, big old, you know those guys really well. And then uh, Javante Williams stepped up and had a great block there. Jerry Judy uh, was running the route uh, into the flat. He had the corner who wasn't aware that his defender, who should have been behind him, was out of position on the other side of the field. He didn't have that awareness, and it cost him because he bit up on Jerry Judy, and Kendall Hinton just ran a route right behind him, and he sat down in, a, in, a, in an area between him and where that uh, where the safety or corner should have been, and Russell Wilson saw it right from the beginning. He saw that they were scrambling. They were out of place, like you said earlier. Quick snap the ball and was able to throw a beautiful pass right there and uh, completion. Kendall Hinton also made a guy miss for some extra yardage, and it was a beautiful play. I love this play the most because Russell Wilson is taking advantage of the Raiders, right? Let the Raiders be Raiders. You break the huddle, you see immediately their nickelback is out of position. He's all the way on the right side of the field. So what does Russell Wilson do? He goes a little bit more up-tempo. Doesn't even look at Kendall Hinton, but literally gives him a little signal to let him know that, hey, I'm coming to you. I've just changed up your route. And immediately when he snaps the ball, when that Raiders defender is in the middle of the field trying to sprint, he has another 30 yards to get on top of Kendall Hinton. What I love is that Russell Wilson shows you that I was going to him the whole entire time. He stares the young fellow down and says, go make a play for me. And he's able to create explosive because of it but it all starts up front with the offensive line it all starts with the running back being able to pick up the blitz as well but Russ is showing that he trusts the 10 guys that are around him and that's what the Broncos need to do more of in order to be successful with this offense moving forward yes hope to see more of that this week still ahead on Broncos weekend some of the other key matchups to watch for as the Broncos look for revenge against the Raiders on Sunday we'll be right back Thanks for sticking with us for this final segment of Broncos Weekend, everyone, as we get into some of the other key matchups between the Broncos and Raiders. Like we talked about earlier, Josh Jacobs against this entire Denver defense is the big one to watch for. And while a lot of Derek Carr's weapons have been placed on IR, he still has arguably the best wide receiver in the league in Devontae Adams. So guys, how can Denver's pass defense contain Devontae Adams this week? Well, uh, Devontae Adams, he's a guy who has a big ego. He's, uh, not, not to say he's egotistical or anything, but he has a lot of confidence that regardless of who's covering him, yeah. he's going to make plays. And I don't anticipate Derek Carr and, and Devontae Adams turning uh, down an opportunity to throw even if Pastor Tan's on him. So uh, I'm going to have a little bit of popcorn up in the press box, and I'm going to be watching that matchup very closely. Yeah, PS2, you got to do what you do, right? At the end of the day, we saw that first matchup and Derek, uh, Derek Carr was able to get the ball to Devontae Adams, but it, it wasn't nothing over the top. This past week against the Indianapolis Colts, Devontae Adams went and had a historic day like he normally does. It doesn't, you know, cause for panic here in Bronco country because PS2 has already played oh, him. Yeah. Yep. He's going to see a lot of the, these guys are going to battle each other a lot moving forward, but at the same time, it, let's put the clamps on them even more because they are limited right now because they don't have Darren Waller. They don't have Hunter Renfro as well. So in opportunities where it's third and say seven plus, I want PS2 to jam at the line of scrimmage because I'm expecting Xavier over as top help and let's let this pass rush get after Derek Carr as well. So I'm super excited about this, but I think PS2 is going to continue to do what he does. Okay, last week, right tackle Billy Turner and center Graham Glasgow left the game early, which left Russell Wilson absolutely battered. He was hit 17 times. Turner, he's out for at least the next four weeks. Graham Glasgow and Tom Compton, they've been limited in practice this week, so we're not really sure what their status is. So given all the injuries and issues with the offensive line, they go, what do you expect this offensive line to look like on Sunday? Well, it's going to be mangled. And even if Graham Glasgow is able to go, he, we know that he's been limited this week in practice. Graham Glasgow is a tough guy. We saw how that hit affected him. So yeah. looking at that and looking at the possibility of it being one hit away from watching Luke Wattenberg go back out there, we have to get the quick passing game going. No matter who's out there on this offensive line, we have to go to a little bit of a three-step drop. We have to allow uh, Quinn Bailey or Calvin Anderson or whoever Whoever's at tackle to cut Max Crosby. So hopefully Nathaniel Hackett is saying, hey, you know what? I'm going to get this quick passing game going. I'm going to let this offensive line give them the ability to cut guys and let the defense know that, hey, this is in their toolbox and you're not just going to have a field day and be able to hit Russell Wilson 17 times like the Tennessee Titans were able to do last week. Yeah, and that's the thing that I'm concerned about is that right tackle position, knowing that we've had several injuries there. If Tom Compton does play, it'll be his first time, be our first time getting a chance to see him play this season. 
uh, Quinn Bailey hasn't had a ton of experience. He played uh, some significant snaps last week uh, because of the injury. So uh, Max Crosby has, you know, he's having another great year like, like he has every year. He's, in, he's a dominant uh, edge rusher. Yep. And whoever's blocking him, I, I agree. Oh, if they can chop him, chop him. Yeah. If you can have somebody else stay in to help block him, you got to do it. But you got you can't let him wreck this game for you offensively. It's just a nice chase of pace, right? Everybody knows if you put a tight end beside a tackle that, oh, he's probably going to chip me right now. Uh, if you have the running back in eye formation, oh, he could come towards me and Max Crosby can see that. But if you call a three-step drop, for an offensive tackle where there's no tight end right there. Now that defender, that edge man on the line of scrimmage, he has to think about it every single time. So it doesn't matter moving forward because he always has to think about it knowing that that's in your toolbox mm -hmm. and you've already done it to him. So it helps this offensive line out a lot more if you just call just one. You like that, don't you? Oh, absolutely. When I played, <laughs> I was pounding on the table. I, I'd lose my mind and blow a gasket if we didn't call a three-step drop within the first eight plays because I wanted to show that defender that, hey, I could cut you. Yeah. So you better think about that for the rest of the game. Yeah. yeah, in terms of the running game here for the Denver Broncos, Justin Alton said today that there isn't a single guy that really has a clear hot hand right now. So how much is the offensive line impacting what these running backs are able to do and how do they rectify that? This well, week? well, Justin Alton, can we get an opportunity for one of these running backs to get 20 carries in a game? Could we give them the chance to get a hot hand? The run game is about body blows. It doesn't matter what you start off averaging. Those averages now go up drastically as the game goes on. You, runners become stronger because you know that that middle linebacker is not bringing it like they used to. You know that that defensive lineman is not filling it like they were at the start of the game. So it's more of a let's get more of a rhythm. Let's just come say come hell or high water. Melvin Gordon or Latavius Murray or heck even Chase Edmonds. You're yeah. going to go into this game and you're going to come out of it with 20 carries and let's see what happens at that point because I guarantee you you will be able to create a hot hand if you run the system like that. Yeah we've had you know a few games where we've had over 100 yards rushing but it didn't really feel like it because we really didn't just come back to it time after time after time and I would like to see that as well. I think Broncos country would like to see it. You know we talk so much uh, all offseason about this outside zone we're going to be running 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 and setting up the pass. I say that week after week, we still haven't really done that. We focus way more on the pass than the run, and I, I think Broncos would love to see the run, the run game get going. You know, everybody looks at that big hit, right, Steve? You're, you're big hit on Koye, right? And that was a, an amazing hit. And you're able to get pumped up, and you're able to be juiced right after, right? For an offensive lineman, it, it's about one play, then okay, the second play, and then the third play, and by the time you get in the third quarter now, all of a sudden that defensive lineman is not coming off. All of a sudden those pancakes become easier, and now you know that you physically dominated that person, but if you're not doing it, you're not able to really get that yeah. feeling, and I would be surprised if any offensive lineman for the Broncos have got that feeling at all this year. It helps with the confidence. Yes. Yeah. All right, well, the last time the Broncos and Raiders met, Cortland Sutton, he was one of three wide receivers that had over 50 yards receiving, and he found the end zone for the first and only time this season. You know, he's coming off a good game against the Titans. He came up with a couple really big catches, of course, but how would you like to see him elevate his game up against a division rival this week? Well, I mean, we've, we've seen Cortland make some amazing catches. He had another amazing catch uh, last week against the Titans. We've seen him go up and catch those 50-50 balls, yeah. turn them into 80-20 balls. We've seen him block. We've seen him do everything. But what I like to see Cortland do is go out there and just, just play fearlessly. Uh, uh, since he's come back from the injury, I haven't seen that same explosiveness that he had before that injury. I don't know if he's you know still bothered by it a little bit or what, but uh, i just like to see him get all the thoughts out of his mind and go back to playing fearlessly, fearlessly the way that he did before he got the injury. Well, this past week, what we saw against Tennessee was a heavy rotation in this wide receiver room. We know Jerry Judy got hurt the first snap of the game, but Kendall Hinton played a lot of plays, right? So we're looking at it. Montreal Washington even played a lot of plays. Well, so I, I like what they're doing now because when they do go to their 11 personnel, the three wide receiver set, they're not saying that it just has to be these three guys. And I really believe that that benefits this offense because it keeps guys fresh. Yeah. It keeps a guy like Cortland Sutton fresh where now he doesn't have to go out there and play 100% of the snaps and be tired and not give you all that he can. I think he wants to play, play those. I think he wants to. Wants yeah, but, but what also it brings in an accountability factor. 
okay, Cortland, that 50-50 ball, you don't go get it for us? Okay, now we're going to come and we're going to put you on the sideline for a play. So we're going to keep guys hungry, keep guys salivating in the mouth, keep guys getting okay. pissed off, keep guys mad and saying, Coach, I should be out here. I'm mad that I'm not getting my play by keeping that rotation alive. Want to see a little bit more Jalen Virgil this week as well, huh? Love that. Yes. Love to see him, right? Yes, I mean, young playmaker. One catch for a touchdown. He's going to be up for the rest of the year. I want to see not only Jalen Virgil in the wide receiver room playing wide receiver on offense, but, hey, if we don't get anything out of Montreal Washington in the return, game, Jalen Burns is a heck of a returner as well. Right. All right, guys, well, like I mentioned at the top of the show, both of these AFC West foes find themselves really in a must-win situation. Both of these teams have lost really close games this year. How do the Broncos ensure that this just isn't another close loss, that they actually leave in power field with the dub? Yeah, because it shouldn't be a thought process of this is going to be a, goal, a close game. The Raiders are wounded. Right? They don't have Hunter Renfro. They don't have Darren Waller. They don't have the resources. Go out there, stop the run. Um, the crowd noise plays a factor. When you play in Las Vegas, I don't know how much of a, a home field advantage they have, but you will have a home field advantage here. So let's focus on getting out to a lead at some point, and let's keep the, the pedal to the floor. Let's keep the gas on it. Let's see if you can score 35. The heck would only score in 23. Let's see if you can get to 35, because I promise you this defense will erupt, and Derek Carr will be running for his life if you find a way to get to 35 points. Yeah. Well, I, I would say we got to stick to the process. Um, you know, there are a lot of people questioning different players on the team, the coaches. I had a talk with some of the guys went in the locker room the other day, and I was saying, stick to the process. Keep believing in one another. A lot of people want to see you break. They want to see you uh, turn on your teammates, turn on your coaches. Don't do that. This is a process. We're not there yet, but you're going down the right road. Keep going that, down that path. I will say, I felt like in the locker room the other day, the guys still feel very together. I agree with a great that. Time. Yes. All right, guys. Well, that's all the time we have for Broncos weekend. We look forward to seeing you at Empower Field at Mile High this Sunday for this AFC West showdown. Kickoff is at 2.05 locally. Then I will see you right back here Tuesday night at 7 o'clock for the full breakdown of Broncos and Raiders. Thanks so much for watching.